Steve Gladstone was obsessed with photography. He spent all of his life with a camera in his hand, seeking the moment frozen in time that would last forever. He died with over 60,000 amazing images in his closet that no one got to see, including himself. He took the images, printed them into negatives, and printed one contact sheet, and then would hide it in a closet. And this went on for years, never showing them to anyone. Now, I was his best friend for many years, and I got to see a lot of photos, but it wasn't until after his death that we, we uncovered this enormous collection of amazing photos. It's taken me four years to develop photos, scan them, and copyright them, and now make them available for you to see. These are just a few of the thousands and thousands of amazing images that Steve has. Steve always called his collection the end of pictures. At one point, when the digital cameras came out, he said, this is the end of pictures, the end of photographs as we know them. Because as soon as digital cameras came available, he knew it was over. Because he never had a digital camera, he only had a film camera. And he would typically go into a concert with a half a roll of film, and he'd have two hours to shoot a half a roll of film, 12 images. And he would line up and get the right angle and wait like a hunter and each one would be spectacular. Steve loved to travel. He would carry around his Hasselblad to Morocco, to Cuba, to Spain, to Mexico, to Thailand. He was fearless, and this is what made him great. He had an ego that was big enough to go capture the photo, but I called him the insecure egotist. His ego was big enough to get the photo, but he was insecure enough that he never was able to sell any of these. I've spent the last four years uncovering all of his collection and bringing to light some of the greatest photos that have never been seen in rock music photography. So it isn't until now that these photos have become available for the world to see. I'm in Santa Cruz, California. I got a studio there. I hear this sound coming from the Kuwamba Jazz Center. I go, oh my God, Dizzy Gillespie's playing. I go backstage. I ask the guy, can I take a shot of you? And I'm thinking to myself, no way, he'll never let me do it. Next thing I know, he shows up at my studio with his whole band. I got my lights set up. I got my cameras, my strobes. I look at this guy and I go, brother! And they all started laughing. I mean, what's this white kid doing? And Dizzy just fucking laughed. I tilted down my tripod, had the Hasselblad there. Bam! Got him, snap. I saw this guy in a movie called The Sheltering Sky. In the movie, Paul Bowles says, are you lost? And that resonated with me. I was in Spain. I took a ferry to Morocco. And within that same afternoon, I managed to find where he lived. Knocked on his door and he let me in. He's sitting on his bed and he's old and he's frail. And I take the shot of him. I said to him, where should I go in Morocco? And he said, go to Chef Shawan. So the next thing I know, I'm in Chef Shawan, Morocco. I get up into the mountains. There's a mansion on this hill, and it's like a hashish factory. I'm walking outside, and this girl appears. The wind is blowing, the sun is coming down, and she's just so witchy and amazing. And I went, what's your name? And she went, Hannah. And I went, Hannah, look at me. And I went, click. I'm a little bit intense, I'm a little bit crazy, but they see my heart, my aim is true, and they embrace me. I'm just trying to capture um, a 60th of a second of life.
Prophet arrived and said, show me the way. 